Welcome to the Soul Surgery Podcast. My name is Nikki Clinch and I am your host. I am a maturation facilitator, teacher and coach, integrative holistic health counselor, breathwork facilitator and author. I am the founder of the Academy of Maturation Coaching, The Alchemy of Being, where I train as many people as I can to become powerful spaces for human beings to come home to their authentic truth. Maturation is a powerful evolutionary process of dissolving trauma, breaking free of stuck patterns, and growing and healing at the taproot. Growing out of who we thought we were from the stories led by our past conditioning in order to grow and evolve into who we were born to be. In this podcast, I will be sharing many different things with you, opening up the doorways to my coaching sessions where you can witness with your own eyes how trauma contaminates our reality and how we can dissolve it, heal it at the root and rewrite the story of our lives, reclaiming our power and reminding each one of us that who we are is wholeness. I will be interviewing some of the world's most prominent teachers in spirituality, healing, transformation, and human involvement, and sharing with you my own teachings and learnings along the way, and above all, sharing with you my heart. The purpose of this podcast is to remind each one of you who you really are, to open up the doorway to a new possibility, to a new paradigm, to healing, health, transformation, and our involvement as individuals and a species. So I hope you enjoy today's episode. One thing that you can do for me, if you find this podcast useful and if you love it, please do subscribe. And if you feel called to leave a review because reviews really matter. They help to spread the word and help to spread this podcast to as many people as we can. And lastly, If you have any big aha moments, any shifts, any insights in any of these episodes, please do share it with me. Share with me which episode it was, where in the episode it happened, and how it has impacted you and your life. So without further ado, let's get going. I hope you enjoy today's episode on the Soul Surgery Podcast. I I pushed myself to be good. Um, I think it was also that expectation to be good if I'm answering your question, and to be the good girls. You're yeah. answering it from your from where you're standing, but what I'd like to know is what would actually happen on the outside if you were to get something bad or wrong? Um, would you be punished? Would you be shamed? Would you be shouted at? Like, yeah. what, how did your parents, um, like, just first tell me how your mum would respond if you did something that she didn't like? or agree with and then how your father would have um so yeah my mum I suppose there would be lots of lots of there would be shame there was was lots of shame um maybe disappointment um of not meeting her expectations and then with my father there was anger there definitely for sure and shame um you know, that was, yes. was hard <laughs> to yes. deal with. Yeah. Really painful. So mm. you're, you know, on a conceptual level, we can see that you're still reliving, you're replaying yeah. that dynamic. You know, you have to be, you know, essentially you had to be good yeah. to, to survive because shaming and yeah. punishment and anger are really scary and as a child you know we're really really children don't understand a world other than their mum and their dad like without mum and dad we don't survive as children literally like if you think of an animal in the wild if the mother abandons the animal it doesn't survive So we have those animalistic instincts in us. So as children, even if what's happening is so, if it's a big rage or violence or shaming and it really doesn't feel good, we need to find ways to get these two to love us, to keep us so we can survive. Yeah. And I think 
there's a lot of confusion there too as a child. I think I remember that confusion as to not understanding that I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm surely I'm not a bad person. Um, but being told, well, you are, or you're doing this again. So you obviously are. Um, yeah. Let's stay there. Cause that's really interesting. So internally, there was some kind of something that was telling you, surely I'm not such a bad person. Yeah. But it was, con it was conflicting, boom, hitting up against what was being told to you. Yeah. No, you're bad. You're doing it wrong. Da, 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 whatever the narrative was that was coming at you from your mom and your dad, what they were projecting onto you, how they saw yeah you and the world so you were having an internal conflict you a tiny little voice saying oh hold on maybe i'm not so bad mm -hmm. hitting up against the narrative yeah yeah does that happen slow down take a moment is that what happens when you need to make decisions and when you need to make choices there's like a little voice that's yours that says, no, this is what I want. This is what feels right for me. This is the way for me. And then you hit the conflict, hitting up against what others might, what their story is. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, definitely as a child, I would have often, I would be very aware of, um, what would other people think if they heard us uh, say this or what would other people think if they heard us fighting or what would other people think in general? Um, so that definitely is one thing. And I think another thing I, that trusting myself, I, I don't think I've ever done that ever in my life as a child that even being given that voice to be heard. Um, so that might be, yeah, something I think it, that just has come up to mind as well, that part of that reason. Yes, I, I, I just spoke about this recently, actually. It, I call it the split, because for me, it, it actually does feel like it, it's an experience of a split, a split between the mind and the body, where, you know, you have, and I did say this to you in Homecoming, and I really mean it, and I want to help you really nurture and strengthen this. You do have a very, very clear intuition yeah it's just that when it came as a child yeah. you were taught that it was wrong and you can't trust it and and really the choices are as a child here are your choices i honor the intuition and the wisdom or the knowing that's hitting that's coming up in me i honor that but I risk abandonment. Yeah. That makes sense to me. If I honor my truth, the consequences could be abandonment. Yeah. Conditional. Conditional. Is that how it, is that a fear that comes up for you in your life today? That same fear. If I honor my truth, a, i.e. get it wrong and then get other people don't like it they don't agree with me da, da 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 i risk abandonment yeah for sure that's definitely it's um yeah for sure that's one thing conditional relationship perhaps not necessarily with my my partner but with other relationships around i i do feel that you know that you love me unconditionally, really. Um, and um, yeah, I was going to say something else there and it's just uh, slipped away. But um, yeah, and just the, the, again, the, the honoring my truth and, and worrying about what they would, would think of me as a result. Um, so if they agree with my decision, that's okay for me. That, that validates everything for me. You know, it's, it's, I really, I really, place a lot of emphasis on that. Um, yes. Basically. Well, because, and really is this core, if they validate your truth, then you know you're not going to be abandoned. 
Yes. You see that little child, that little girl that was in that dynamic continuously, it sounded like all the time, all she needed to know was that she wasn't going to be abandoned. That's why you'll find all the strategies. I got to be good. I got to be right. I got to get it right. What am I going to say? How am I going to speak? Da, 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 da. Yeah. That's it, Nikki. Yeah. That's it's, and it's constant and it's exhausting. It's really, it's really exhausting actually living your life like that. Um, and I think I've done, I've, I've made so much progress since doing the massive work with you. Um, but what I've been reminded of is that this is daily. And I think I need to, I need to trust that those words that you gave to me of, you, you know, you just need to trust were, were really powerful for me. Um, but I think what scared me was that I, soon after that, this situation came up for me and I really let myself be sucked into the spiral of you're so bad and I can't believe you did this. And this is surely people won't agree with your decision and, um, yeah, just shame. And, and then sadness, a lot of sadness around that. Um, yes. Yeah. Well, you see, you know, and I did say this in the program and I say it a lot, you know, it's all very good and well to have the big, beautiful shifting, healing experiences in programs but the part that really changes your life is when you go home and you have to repeat it over and over and over and over again and life will keep bringing you the same trigger and you have to repeat it this new way because as we repeat the new behavior we are literally rewiring the neurons in yeah. our brain where we're rewiring the neurons so that we experience ourselves and the world differently. That's why the triggers don't just go away because you have a big shift. The power is in you. You have to go home and feel the, f it will come the fear, the tightness, the, what do I do? What do I say? Da, 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 da. But, this time bring awareness to it take care of yourself in it mm. and then give yourself the opportunity to show up differently let's go into a regression around this just because why not and let's give you some some deeper healing around it so it's not just conceptual do you feel comfortable with that yep are you sure <laughs> <laughs> yeah can you see me i can